relax when doing these exercises. Don't strain or push yourself. If it hurts, ease off. The plow. Legs over your head. Try to touch your toes to the floor. Legs straight and breathe. Don't forget to breathe. Elbows as close together as possible. Support your back with your whole hand. Relax your muscles. This will stretch your back, neck, and hips. The shoulder stand. Raise your feet above your head. Keep your back and legs straight and hips in. This increases the circulation to the head, stretches the neck, and by being upside down, it reverses the sagging effect of gravity on your body. Breathe deeply and evenly. Use your breathing to relax your body. The fish. Lay flat on your back, hands underneath your buttocks, and elbows close together. Lift your back off the floor. Relax, and let the stretch relieve tension from your neck and lower back. As you exhale, feel the tightness leave the body. Next, lay flat. Grab your right knee. Straighten out your leg. Pull it back, keeping it straight. Take a deep breath. Exhale. As you exhale, stretch a little further. Relax, don't strain. When you are relaxed, you become aware of the limitations so that you can gradually expand beyond with practice. Look forward. This will lengthen your spine and your body and increase the flexibility of your shoulders and spine as well as strengthening your arms. Stretch with the same feeling as if you have just awakened from a nap. And here's the child's pose, which stretches your back the other way. Hmm. Is it okay if we just stay here for a while? This loosens up the hips, lower back and neck. Let the stretch release tension from your body. Breathe deeply. Always try to achieve deeper levels of relaxation. And in reverse. to increase, increase the range, range of motion, motion in your neck, neck and at least tension. tension. Now, feet together. together. Hands on the lower back. Rotate, Rotate your, your hips, hips clockwise. clockwise. This is called the horse stance. Stand with your feet wide spread and hands on your hips. Knees out, toes forward. Your back straight and sit into the stance. Push your buttocks forward. Weight is evenly distributed between the legs and the feet are parallel to each other. This stance, when correctly aligned, should be able to be held without tension or the feeling of being in a rigid position. You should feel that you are in balance with no effort. Left forward stance. Your left leg should be perpendicular to the floor. Your right leg should be straight. Your right hip faces forward, the back straight, shoulders aligned with your hips. Point your toes at a 45 degree angle. Weight is evenly distributed between the front and back foot. Now back to the horse. Right forward stance. Right leg perpendicular to the floor, left leg straight. Pretty good. This will strengthen the legs, hips, buttocks, and lower back 
as well as stretch the calf muscles. Right tiger crane wrist. Right arm forward, elbows locked. Turn wrist out. In. Center. Turn the hand over. Form a crane's beak. Snap the wrist back and bend the elbow. Strike out. Turn the hand out. In. Center. Turn the hand over. Form a crane's beak. Snap the wrist back and bend the elbow. Strike out. Keep your fingers straight. This strengthens and stretches the wrist in all directions. Now repeat with the left hand. The dragon represents the spirit. The spirit involves alertness, vitality, confidence, and a positive attitude. Of all the animals represented in Kung Fu, only the dragon is that of the imagination. This is significant because to develop the dragon within, one must use visualization. The mind must be conditioned to see the bright side of any situation, to positively affirm the future, to expect that wellness, harmony, and goodwill will prevail. Only with imagination can one achieve the highest levels of the art. In essence, one must have faith in the positive, unseen powers of the universe. What lies within that dart, just begging to course its way through your veins, is an incredibly potent and quite infallible truth serum. I call it the undisputed truth. Twice as strong as sodium pentothal, with no druggy after effects, except for a slight wave of euphoria. You feel it? Euphoria? Yeah. No. Too bad. As you know, I'm quite keen on comic books especially the ones about superheroes. I find the whole mythology surrounding superheroes fascinating. Take my favorite superhero, Superman. Not a great comic book, not particularly well drawn. Mm. But the mythology, the mythology is not only great, it's unique. How long does this shit take to go into effect? About two minutes. Just long enough for me to finish my point. Now, a staple of the superhero mythology is there's the superhero and there's the alter ego. Batman is actually Bruce Wayne. Spider-Man is actually Peter Parker. When that character wakes up in the morning, he's Peter Parker. He has to put on a costume to become Spider-Man. And it is in that characteristic Superman stands alone. Superman didn't become Superman. Superman was born Superman. When Superman wakes up in the morning, he's Superman. His alter ego is Clark Kent. His outfit with the big red S. That's the blanket he was wrapped in as a baby when the Kents found him. Those are his clothes. What Kent wears, the glasses, the business suit, that's the costume. That's the costume Superman wears to blend in with us. Clark Kent is how Superman views us. And what are the characteristics of Clark Kent? He's weak. He's unsure of himself. He's a coward. Clark Kent is Superman's critique on the whole human race. <laughs> 